Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. You guys, Electric Forest is less than a month away. I feel like Electric Forest was like last week. <laughs> Maybe not last week, but I feel like it just happened. Yeah, anyway, Electric Forest is coming up and I wanted to make this video for you, especially if you're new to forest or new to camping music festivals. Camping can be overwhelming and there's a lot of organization and planning that goes into festivals. I just wanted to make this video to help you guys out a little bit. This is going to be my second Electric Forest. I went last year, I bought my tickets in 2019 and then ended up waiting for two years cause you know, all the things happened. But I've also been to a lot of other camping festivals. I prefer camping festivals over city festivals. So I feel like I have a lot of experience with camping and I can help you out. Like if you need help, I can help you out. I got you, okay? <laughs> Before we get into it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will be vlogging Electric Forest this year. I did vlog last year. I have four days of it. So if you're curious to see more about my experience or what Electric Forest is about, you can go watch those vlogs. But yeah, let's get into it, you guys. So I did ask my Instagram if they had any questions, so I will share those first and then I will just dig right into every single topic. I will try to organize it so if you have a specific thing you're looking for, you can find it in the little slidey bar below. Also, I'm sorry if it's dark, like the sun is kind of just setting. I had good lighting and now it's going away, so let's get through this. The first question is, best way to get there if you're flying from out of state? Okay, so let me just tell you this first. Last year, I drove from Minnesota because I lived there. Now I live in Texas, so I'm flying. Tips, if you haven't already bought your flight, I'm sorry, it's gonna be expensive. Fly Southwest if you can, because on Southwest, you're able to check two luggages and then have a carry-on and a personal item. And that personal item can be like a backpack. You know what I mean? So lots of room for if you're flying Southwest. The cities, you can fly either into Chicago, which is what I'm doing, or you could fly into Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I think that's only about an hour from the festival. Uh, Chicago is about three hours. So yeah, those are probably your best options for flying. Question number two is how to deal with mud when camping. So luckily I've never really had to deal with mud at any of the festivals I've been at. However, I usually do put down a tarp under my tent and then also always just keep your most valuable items in your car, even if it's not rain gonna rain, like you should be keeping your valuables in your car. Also a tip for mud, wear waterproof shoes, whether that's rain boots or like hiking boots or shoes that are just durable in the mud. Also baby wipes, you can have a little baby wipe shower, get that mud off you and a camping shower bag. So you kind of, so you have water to just like rinse off there. Do you recommend bringing food or buying food? I'm just gonna make this my food section. I've talked about this in other prep videos, but for me personally, I always like having food at camp. I'm a hungry little beast. I'm hungry all the time. So usually our camp will plan breakfast in the morning and then I will have a protein based snacks. So get a dozen eggs or more and hard boil them. That's a really good option. Also the paninos, I love those, which is like the little meat and cheese roll ups. Those are really good. You're gonna be walking a lot, so burning a lot of calories. So providing your body with that protein is gonna be amazing. You can also bring like granola bars, um, fruits. What I always do at Okeechobee is I go to Publix and get some pub subs. And I usually get two pub subs and have them cut it up. So I have a half a sandwich for every day for just another snack. They don't have Publixes in Michigan. So we will probably just go to either Subway or Jimmy John's. But having sandwiches is really nice, whether you buy them or make them. I always end up just planning to buy at least one meal inside the festival for dinner. Just because sometimes, depending on where you, you camp, it's not gonna be that easy to just walk back and forth from the festival to camp just to like eat a meal. Like it's, you might as well just buy something in the in the festival, right? Yeah, definitely go grocery shopping before the festival. Get sandwiches if you can, definitely have a cooler for that. And then 
hard boiled eggs, meat and cheese, and maybe some, gr some granola. And then just, yeah, plan to buy food in the festival as well. That is my game plan for every festival. So you guys can use that too. <laughs> How do you stay cool from the heat during the day? So last year at Forest, I feel like it wasn't that hot. We were like pretty lucky. But at Okeechobee this year, there was one day that it was so hot. We ended up just sitting in the truck with the AC blowing for like two hours. Kind of do low activity during the day if it's like really hot luckily electric forest is in a forest there's hammocks all around so if you wanted to just get ready early during the day and then go and find a hammock and take a little snooze that like under the shade of the trees like that's great you could also definitely take a, a cold shower that will help you out getting a fan or like one of those portable fans that like spray water that would be a good idea too also just wearing comfortable clothes i'll talk about clothes a little bit later on but the more festivals i go to the comfortable the more comfortable my clothes have gotten <laughs> just like easy to move around in like whether it's hot or cold do you have service last year for forest i did have service but it was spotty but i think me and only one other person in my group were able to communicate with each other. I have Verizon, so that's just like something to know. If you have Verizon, you'll have spotty service, but I don't think I could really go on Instagram or like any of the socials while I was in the forest. Maybe, I think at camp, maybe I could. I don't, I honestly don't remember, but I remember that I did have some, so, some kind of service. Okay, you guys, so now I'm gonna talk to you about my experience at Forest last year, just like traveling and getting into the festival. Like I said earlier, I drove from Minnesota. It was like an eight hour drive. We drove on Wednesday and stayed a, at a hotel in Benton Harbor, which is like an hour and a half, two hours from Rothbury, which is where Forest is. We ended up going to bed early and waking up early, meeting a bigger group, and we went in in forest with like caravanning with our group so if you don't know this already you camp with the people that you drive in with so unless you have group camping or potentially good life i'm not exactly sure how good life works i'm a ga bitch <laughs> but like you have to coordinate with your group before going in for us last year we actually got in to Forest at about 10.30 in the morning. Maybe it was like 9.30 or no, maybe it was like 8.30 actually. Cause if we left at 5.30 and met our group, I think it was maybe like 8, 8.30 we got in. Um, we actually got a really good spot. But before I get to that, we went through security and I remember that they had dogs like sniffing for like bombs, like bomb dogs maybe. and. But I remember that dog being really tired because it was like one dog sniffing hundreds of vehicles. And then they, I know that they checked our center council and then the glove boxes. And then if they did see coolers, they would look into the coolers and ask us questions if we had glass. So they would take any glass away. Just no, like no glass. Don't even bother. Like if you're bringing in alcohol, just make sure that there's no glass. Like if you want to bring in liquor, like get plastic bottles or pour it into little water bottles beforehand, stuff like that. Glass is not a good idea because people are running around barefoot. Like you don't want your glass bottle to break and then potentially hurt some someone later. But yeah, overall, I think getting through security maybe took like an hour, hour and a half. And then it was maybe another 30, 40 minutes until we actually parked and started setting up and we got super lucky last year we parked in a spot that was only like a 10 minute walk from the the entrance of the festival this is the thing you guys when you are in ga you don't know if you're gonna be in the way back or if you're gonna be like right there and you just gotta let the festival gods take over and decide where you are like i said 
last year at Forest and this past year at Okeechobee, we were like 10 minutes from the front entrance area. But last year at Okeechobee, I swear I was like a mile and a half away. It kind of sucked, but it is what it is, you guys. It is what it is. I did want to say that checking out and leaving the festival last year, for us, it wasn't that bad. But I heard horror stories that for some people, it took them like three hours to get out of the festival Monday. So my advice to you is to pack up your stuff Sunday night as much as you can and then get up early and leave Monday morning at like 8 a.m. Because I think we left around 9.30 and we just zipped right out. We didn't have to wait at all. But yeah, like I said, I, I heard other people were waiting like two to three hours to get out. And if you're like me and have a flight to catch Monday evening in Chicago, three hours away, those two to three hours that's very valuable time that could be wasted and you could potentially miss your flight and it would just be a shit show. Um, yeah, so that's that. <laughs> Another thing to know before going into the festival is if you're gonna get your hair done, like I know that like I always get my hair extensions. If you want hair extensions, I encourage you to do them before you come to Forest. It's just like one less thing you have to worry about. And I mean, I don't know, like maybe you can make an appointment with someone at Forest that, you know, you plan like the day you get there to get it done. That's fine. But I've learned from experience that it's just easiest to get your hair done before so then you don't have to worry about it because once you get there, you're gonna wanna set up your tent and you're gonna wanna socialize and maybe just like go in right away. Like you don't wanna deal with having to get your hair done because for me anyway, it takes like an hour and a half to two hours sometimes to get my hair done. Like that's like precious time. And trust me, I got my hair done at uh, EDC Vegas, I waited in line for five hours. And like that, like looking back, it's just like, it was kind of like a waste of like an afternoon. Um, that's just another random tip. <laughs> Okay, camping. So I'm not gonna go like into super, super detail about camping, but I'll just give you tips on how to make your camping area cozy like some products you can buy all the things but first i want to explain that when they line up the cars they line up the cars in a vertical way versus horizontal way like if you're walking into camp you have to walk like along the side of your car versus if it's like parallel parking does that make sense i'll like put a little video here that means that there's less space for your actual campsite and i know the volunteers do do a good job that they ask how many cars are in the group and they'll park cars like this so then like you know if you only have two cars in your group they'll park one on each side so then you can share a common space versus if you're just two on this side and then you there's two random people on the other side and then it's like awkward However, it's really fun to meet your camping neighbors. So sometimes like if it is that awkward way, like it might be okay, you know what I mean? But that's just like something I want you guys to know. All I know is at Okeechobee and like Wakan Festival, you have all the space in the world, but not at Forest, you're smushed at Forest. That's just how it is, I'm sorry to say it. <laughs> oh, also, um, this goes with the heat thing. So you are going to be camping in a field. What is not in a field? Trees <laughs> that provide shade. Um, I know there's some tree lines, so if you're one of those lucky people that get that shade in the morning, then the festival gods are looking out for you, okay? But if not, I highly, highly recommend a canopy. Put canopies over your tents and then also tapestries along the sides. Don't forget your zip ties to put those tapestries up, but yes, canopies and tapestries to keep your tent cool in the morning because I know most of you guys you're gonna be up in the afters you're probably not gonna go to bed till seven in the morning right and then if your tent is hot you're gonna get like two hours of sleep and they're done that I understand but canopy tapestries must have I made this list of things to have at your campsite to make them cozy so I'm just gonna go down the line. I'm flying in, but I'm lucky enough to have people that are gonna be driving and picking us up at the airport. So they're gonna be able to bring some of the, these things that you won't be able to bring if you're flying. So if you have homies from Minnesota or 
the surrounding Michigan, you know, sh like Chicago, Wisconsin area. Have your homies bring these things for you, okay? A table, fold up table, fold up chairs, camping shower. I guess you can pack that. Yoga mats, because you're going to want to do that yoga at noon. I did it twice last year. It was amazing. Hammock and a hammock stand because yeah, you won't be around trees, but if you have that hammock stand, if your tent is too hot, you can just sleep in the hammock with your hammock stand. But I have a hammock stand here in my apartment, have yet to use it because I fly to all my festivals. <laughs> anyway, a rug, tapestries, which is what I mentioned already, uh, string lights for your outside or some visual representation so you can easily find your camp spot. Toilet paper. This is like random that should be in like the food part, but toilet paper, I always have a roll of toilet paper in my tent with me for like blowing my nose or if I do want to slip out and go pee in front of my truck, it's just my toilet paper is right there. And also if you have people in your group who are driving, have them bring extra pillows and blankets because if you're flying, you can only bring like maybe one pillow, maybe like two blankets. I don't know. I'm just, we're going to have our group just load up on the blankets and pillows for everyone else. Squishmallows, <laughs> those go with the pillows and blankets. <laughs> and then a wagon. So a wagon is really handy to have, especially if you're gonna be taking those portable shower bag showers. It's kind of awkward to like hold full shower bag with water, but if you have a wagon, do you guys know what I'm saying when I say wagon? Like that's a wagon. That's my Minnesota accent, the wa wagon wagon <laughs> so pull your little wagon with your shower bag full of water and you're good oh also how to sleep at a festival so this is what i do and it it works every time i have my bose like noise canceling headphones that i put over here and then i put earplugs in but then i download like on spotify or Cal the calm app or whatever cricket noises or just like some white noise or just relaxing sleep sound that's like eight hours long so then i can listen to that and fall asleep also an eye mask can't forget your eye mask you guys because that sun is going to be popping up but yeah we were like right next to the afters last year and if i didn't have my cricket noises like i probably wouldn't have been able to go to sleep as easily <laughs> Okay, so things that you might want to bring into the festival that you might not think about. So like, obviously like a hydration backpack, like the baby wipes, um, the phone safety string. This year I'm ordering the phone safety string. It's like a bungee cord that it can hook to your bag. And then if someone tries to steal your phone, it'll just like whip back at you. Like it's super secure. Like I almost lost my phone. Well, I didn't almost lose it. I dropped my phone and walked away at Okeechobee, but then I realized I dropped it and I like took three steps back and I, I saw it. It was like on the floor. Like I, I grabbed it, but I had a heart attack, mini heart attack because I thought about, I'm like, what if I lost my phone? Like I took all these bomb pictures and videos and I literally just bought my phone like a week before Oki. <laughs> so I, after that experience for Forest, I'm definitely buying like the phone, like keychain things for so no one steals my phone. This year, I'm gonna buy a disposable camera because fun. And then also, what's really popular at Forest are the Chilbo Schwagens, like that's like the brand, but it's like the blow up couches. And pro tip if you have a blow up couch, you need a fan. So get a fan, that's the easiest way to blow it up, and you're set. So like I said, a lot of people bring those and especially if you're going to post up for multiple sets at the same stage, it's really nice to have those. Speaking of posting up, glow sticks. So I learned this at Oki. If you're, if you have a big group and it's nighttime and a lot of people are walking by you, it's a really good idea to get a bunch of glow sticks. Like you can get a pack of a hundred off Amazon and make like a glow stick circle around your crew so then as people are going through the crowd they see where you are it creates a road for the people walking by so they don't walk through your 
group area. I really like that idea. We did it at Oki and it works like a charm. I wanna talk about the trading post and giving tree and also just giving in general. So in the EDM scene, what's really popular is to trade candy. Handing out things spreads the plur for sure. And I just wanna explain to you guys. So Forest has the trading post and then they have the giving tree. And those are like the two main things where you can take things and like trade. Let me explain though. The, the trading post is for more highly valuable items. I honestly, I felt like I was walking through like an antique shop when I went to the trading post last year. There was a lot of really unique things, um, a lot of like metal work, artwork. I think they had jerseys, but pretty much things like, a lot of the things at the trading post are worth like hundreds of dollars. So if you have something really cool and unique that's worth like 50, 100, $150 to you, like bring that. Like it's cool to bring something to trade at the trading post. I, I didn't have anything to trade last year and I was bummed about it because I like they had a lot of really cool things, but everything that was of value was like my phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, so. Trading post is more valuable items. And then the giving tree, that's where you're gonna see your little knickknacks. Like I think I left, I left like a candy at the giving tree and I took a little magnet. So th those are things that you're gonna find like under $5, like stickers, stuff like that. It's still cool to like trade. And then also, this is just a reminder that festivals, it's so fun to like have something to give out, whether that's candy or little keychains. I know I have friends who give out ducks or you can find little cute little toys or stuffed animals on Amazon. Just like do some research and I don't know, it's not everyone does it, but for me, I like to like have something to give to people if I meet them. And I like to receive things too. So I don't know, just think that the cooler of the item that you have to give, the cooler the item you may also receive. So not to be like, that sounds like a little bit selfish, but it's true. Like I know friends who they make the huge cuffs and they've like handed that out and they've gotten like huge perlers in exchange. So food for thought. <laughs> Next thing I wanna talk about is what to wear to Electric Forest. Like I mentioned before, like the hiking boots for shoes or like Nike or like athletic shoes, that's a very good idea. Forest is rough terrain. It's essentially like hiking. Also there's like the observatory stage and some other parts of the forest they have like wood chips so definitely wear closed toed shoes i did meet someone at okeechobee this past year that she wore at every festival these like they're like barefoot shoes so they have like a little bit of a hard sole but it's essentially like you're walking barefoot and they're like ugly they're not cute but i like looked at them and she was like yeah it's like i'm barefoot but i still have that layer of protection and they can get wet and then they dry really easy. So low key, I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll wear that. Cause it's like, I know a lot of people go barefoot and they like go in the porta potties barefoot. I'm like, okay, I'm not that much of a look. <laughs> no shame if you are, but it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> For like clothing wise, you can go all out or not out at all. Like I said before, with the weather changes, it can be kind of more hot or cooler at night. Definitely wear something just comfortable, easy to like pull on and off for when you're going to the bathroom. I make the mistake every year though where I have a complicated outfit. So that's just, I don't know. I always end up having one day where I'm like, re I regret. I'm like, I look cute, but this shit is hard to take off. There's a lot of people that go more of like the woke hippie vibe, but then there's also a lot of people who do go all out with like the two piece sets, like the bikini type style. So just wear what you want, you know, just make sure you bring a sweatshirt for when it's too cold or a pashmina and then like comfortable clothes for when it uh, gets really hot. Also a little pointer is if you do have more elaborate outfits, plan to wear those on the first or second day and then be more chill the rest of the time. That way, like you're not wearing your most elaborate outfit on Sunday when you're super exhausted. Like it's just, you're not gonna wanna wear it at that point. 
But yeah, that's what I do. That's like all I have for like the clothing related segment. My best advice for you though is to just explore. Um, if you're part of a group, don't be afraid to leave your group. I always have to go off on my own for at least like an hour or two because everyone annoys me. And sometimes like <laughs> everyone does not annoy me, annoy me, but sometimes your group can hold you back. So if you want to like split off from your group and do your own thing, go to the scavenger hunts, like go look at the art installations, just do it. Also, if people want to see one set and you want to see another, don't be afraid to go to a set by yourself. Like you can make friends, <laughs> but yeah, just don't be afraid to explore. Definitely go for the music, but oh, don't like overstack your schedule. My advice would be to just pick three artists per day and that you have to see and then explore and just like bop around the rest of the time. Electric Forest, there's so much to explore, the art installations, everything. I feel like I'm just like talking over and over. Oh, I feel like I'm just talking over and over again. But yes, thank you guys so much. Have a lovely forest. I hope to see you there. I think I'm gonna have a little meetup. So I will make an announcement with that soon. Um, I guess when the map comes out. But yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing forest. And I hope these tips helped you in somewhat way, shape, or form. And yeah, I'll see you in the forest. So bye. <laughs>